We've learned a lot of tests to decide whether an infinite series converges or diverges. Before you watch this video, make sure that you're familiar with each of the tests we've gone through. In this video, we'll talk about choosing a reasonable test for a given series. If a series is geometric, we know a whole bunch about it. In particular, if we know the common ratio between terms, we know whether the series converges or diverges. Look at these six series, figure out which ones are geometric, and for the geometric series, decide whether they converge or diverge. The first series is geometric. Its common ratio is negative a half. So this is a convergent series. The second series is also geometric. I can write this as 3 quarters to the n. So its common ratio is 3 quarters. This also converges. The third series doesn't fit the format. This isn't geometric. The fourth series also is not geometric. The fourth series is geometric. My ratio is a tenth. This is a convergent series. And my fourth series has a sort of geometric piece, but overall it is not a geometric series because of this n. One note about geometric series, for 2020, because we've cut so much content from the end, unless we're explicitly given the sequence of partial sums, geometric series are the only ones whose sums we can actually evaluate. So for most series, we're just stuck saying, does it add up in a sensible way to a finite number, or does it not? With geometric series, we're able to go a step further and say, not only does it add up to a sensible number, that sensible number is whatever. The divergence test is applied when the terms being added up are not going to zero. For these nine series below, pause the video, decide which of them obviously diverge by the divergence test. In the first series, my terms are getting closer and closer to a third. So I'm adding up basically a third plus a third plus a third plus a third. This is a divergent sum by the divergence test. For the second series, these terms are going to zero. The divergence test is mute. It doesn't tell us whether they converge or diverge. For the third series, same thing. As n goes to infinity, this looks like log of 1. Log of 1 is equal to 0. The terms I'm adding are getting closer and closer to 0, so the divergence test tells us nothing about this third series. Fourth series, my terms are going to infinity. Remember, polynomials grow faster than logarithms, so this series diverges by the divergence test. Now let's consider the fifth series. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So this series diverges by the divergence test, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. The limit as n goes to infinity of sine n doesn't exist, so this series also diverges by the divergence test. This limit is 0. My terms being added go to 0, so the divergence test tells us nothing. These terms go to 0, so the divergence test tells us nothing. And these terms go to 0, so the divergence test tells us nothing. So the divergence test gives us these four series right off the bat. An important thing to remember with the divergence test is it can never show that something converges. So these two here are a nice example. In both cases, the terms being added are going to zero. In one case, the sum is climbing towards infinity. In another case, the sum is finite. The integral test mainly gave us p-series but it does come up as a useful test in its own right from time to time. In order to apply the integral test, we need to be able to take our series and turn them into a function that is continuous and positive and decreasing and also possible to integrate. For these six series, think about which ones you might want to use the integral test for. The first series is a great candidate for the integral test. If I let f of x be 1 over x log x, this is continuous positive and decreasing when x is large enough, and it's easy to integrate if I let u be the natural log of x. The second series is also pretty easy to integrate, 
but it's easier to think of this as a geometric series. whose ratio is 1 over e. So although you could integrate this and show that the series converges, it's a lot easier to say that it converges because it's a geometric series. For the third series, this would also be nice to integrate. The function x e to the negative x is positive, continuous, and decreasing, and it can be integrated using integration by parts. Our fourth series is also a candidate for the integral test. If you want to anti-differentiate arctangent, remember again you need integration by parts. And the trick is that your dv is equal to dx. The fifth series does not have only positive terms. It's also not decreasing. So we cannot use the integral test here. The sixth series. The p-test came from the integral test. Pause the video to decide which of these series are p-series, and of the p-series, which converge and which diverge. p-series have constant exponents. Our first series is a p-series with p equals 2, so this is a convergent series. Our second series is a p-series with p equals to 1. I can rewrite this as 4 thirds times the harmonic series. This diverges with p equals to 1. The third series is also a p-series. p is equal to 1 half. So it diverges. The fourth series is not a p-series. The fifth series is not a p-series. These are actually both geometric. The third series is a p-series if I rewrite it as 1 over n cubed. This has p equals to 3, so it converges. The idea behind the ratio test is that we treat a generic infinite series similarly to how we might treat a geometric series. Remember, geometric series have a common ratio. Non-geometric series might not have the same ratio between consecutive terms being added, so we take that limit and call that r. For this reason, ratio tests often come up when we're looking at a series that is similar to a geometric series. Also, just the mechanics of this, the fact that we're dividing, means that ratio test works really well with factorials and things multiplied by a geometric series. Pause the video, decide which of these are good candidates for the ratio test. One thing to know about the ratio test is, whenever you try and use it on a sequence whose terms are rational functions, it will always be inconclusive. So the ratio test is not going to help us with these two series that I've crossed out just now. For a similar reason, if I tried to use it with 1 over n log n, my r would be 1. It wouldn't be helpful. On the other hand, the remaining three are great candidates for the ratio test. This 4 to the power n reminds us of a geometric series. So this looks like the terms of a geometric series with each term multiplied by something. So the first series is a great candidate for the ratio test. The second series, again, has a piece that looks like a geometric series, and then also has a factorial. This is another excellent candidate for the ratio test. And this last one will work with the ratio test as well. Again, it has some things in common with a geometric series, but because my base is n and not a constant, it's not exactly a geometric series. This last one would also be a good candidate for a comparison test. Comparison tests are often nice when we have a function that is a familiar function, just modified a little bit in a way that we suspect doesn't matter too much. Oftentimes we'll have a series whose terms look like a series we're familiar with, but there are some smaller terms maybe added or subtracted that we suspect doesn't change the behavior very much. That's when you want to pull out a comparison test. For these eight series, Think about which ones would be good candidates for comparison tests and what you might compare them to. 
For some of these, comparison is unnecessary. We have some geometric series. Comparing these with anything is unnecessary because we can instantly say that both of them converge. Similarly, we have a p-series. There's no need to compare it to anything. We can instantly say that it converges. This second series is a perfect example of a series that can easily do a comparison test. I can compare this to the harmonic series. It looks like the harmonic series, but in every term I've added this little plus one. The third series can be compared to the harmonic series as well. For the remaining three, comparison is also a good option. We want to compare to series that are more or less the same minus these distractions. So we usually like to get rid of the smaller terms. Let's skip to the sixth one. For the fifth one, there's a slight trick here. In order to use the comparison test, we need to have positive terms. But I can rewrite this series as negative 1 over n to the fifth minus n cubed. Now my terms are positive, so I can compare it to a p-series. Now not all tests are equally useful and not all tests are equally easy to perform. So it's nice to have a feel for when a test is really straightforward, easy. So here's a collection of a bunch of different series, and we're going to go one by one, kind of from easiest to hardest through our tests, and decide which series are good for which test. When divergence test works, it often works almost immediately. This is where it's really helpful to have good intuition about what functions look like, being able to picture their behavior. So pause the video of these series, which of them can you immediately say diverge by the divergence test? We're looking for series where the terms being added don't go to zero. These terms go to infinity. These terms don't have a limit. These terms go to e. These terms go to 1. And these terms don't have a limit either. Now sometimes it can be a little tough to find the limits, especially when there are factorials. Uh, it's fine to leave something like this for the ratio test, rather than try to really work yourself up finding the limit of the terms. Now pause the video and decide which of these can you automatically determine convergence or divergence of using the p-test. The harmonic series is a p-series with p equals to 1. If I factor out a 3, I see this is a p-series with p equal to 4. So by the p-series, I immediately see that this first series diverges, and this other green series converges. Now pause the video, pick out the geometric series, and decide whether they converge or diverge. Some of these take a little bit of simplification. I can call this 5, 6 to the power 3 to the power n. So I see this is a geometric series with common ratio 5 6 cubed. So it converges. Similarly, 2 to the power n divided by e to the power n can be written as 2 over e to the power n. Our common ratio is 2 over e. e is greater than 2, so this is less than 1, so this is a convergent series. And these last two are geometric series as well. My r here is a tenth, because remember negative n means I have 10 to the n in the denominator, so this converges. My r here is negative 1, so this diverges. We saw two reasons that last one diverges. If a geometric series diverges, it also diverges by the divergence test. The top three are three that can almost instantly tell us whether something diverges or converges. The remaining three usually take a little bit more work. Look through this list and see which ones you think would be really good candidates for a comparison test.
Series number four, I can compare to a P-series. This series here also has a plus in the denominator. I can compare this to a geometric series. The series below it, I can compare to a series whose convergence I could find using the ratio test. This series here also has this kind of awkward addition. I can compare this to a harmonic series. Now we take away the obvious comparisons, the obvious divergence tests, p-tests, and geometric series. Think about which one of these remaining series are good candidates for the ratio test. For the ratio test, we like things that look like easy functions multiplied by what would otherwise be geometric terms, and we like factorials. So this is a great candidate for the ratio test. It's got both a factorial and this 2 to the power n, which reminds us of a geometric series. Same thing here, it looks like something multiplied by a geometric series. Here we've got this here we've got more geometric looking things with powers of n's and also a factorial. Same here, and same here. All of these are great candidates for the ratio test. Now the only thing left is 1 over n log n. The integral test, again, was mainly used to get us the p-test. For most series, if you're clever enough, you can use a comparison test before you have to resort to an integral test.